Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the Spirit of the Lord is here in love, and it brings us to quiet as a dove. I can see the flow of angels' wings shining brightly from above. Surely the Spirit of the Lord is here in love. Surely the blessing of the Lord is in my heart, and it's near when we're together. of angels wings and I know how great thou art surely the blessings of the Lord is in my heart Amen Good morning everyone and welcome this is our first Sunday of the summer and it is going to be unbearably hot in the east so enjoy the much more moderate weather here um, we're so glad that you are here to join us in worship our we're gonna have a guest speaker today in Karis and he's been here before so, so glad to have you and looking forward to hearing from you um, we are also uh, people in many different places of many different uh, places in our, our life journey. We are represented in the Presbyterian Church USA and the United Church of, of Christ. But even so, even if you're searching, if you're looking, even if you're not sure where you are in life, you are welcomed here. And you will hear, I hope, a word of love. And we are gathered and we like to welcome one another with those words, no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And our prayer families this week are Dick, uh, Betty and Dick Pankey, Anne Marie Parker. The churches that we are praying for are Korean Presbyterian Church in San Francisco and First Samoan Congregational UCC uh, in Oakland. And we have birthdays, some 80th birthdays. Uh, Cal Krishnan and Ken Lieber both celebrate their birthday today. Um, Ken is not 80, but Cal is, I understand. And Bill Dexheimer is celebrating his 80th birthday on Tuesday. Welcome, Bill. And Clint and Nolan Bishop on June 26th. Let's sing happy birthday. Church of many traditions. I'd like to have you uh, bear with me for this um, a couple of minutes. I promise it's only a couple minutes long. It's an introduction to a book called The Way We Lived, which is a book about California indigenous people recommended to me by Chief Philip Scott. So I, I called and asked for him to recommend something that that he felt realistically and truthfully explained their story. So this is just kind of part of the introduction. And as soon as I read this, I knew it would be the right book. So I do ask, it's, it's just a couple minutes. It's not too terribly long. This is from a man named Michael Misquish, who is from the Kumeyaay tribe. He says, 
Growing up in California in the 60s, I was exposed to the same California story as most people who attended the public schools. Indians were the Apache, Cherokee, or Sioux. Indians were the warriors of the plains or the eastern woodland. They greeted the pilgrims and taught them to farm. As I grew older, I learned of other tribes like Pueblo Indians, Navajo, and Apache. I was taught that I was an Indian too, but we seemed different. Our houses weren't teepees, and we didn't hunt buffalo, and turquoise was a color, not a stone. When I spent time on the reservation, my uncles would tell stories from their lives, World War II, fighting with the BIA, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, working on local ranches, but little of the Kumeyaay history was mentioned, other than references to our land being stolen and our people killed. It seemed that the mission narrative taught by teachers and historians must indeed be true. As I approached adulthood, I learned there was more to the story. I gained snippets of information from newspaper articles, magazines, and talks with elders. But the colonial narrative dominated my perspective, particularly regarding other California Indians. At one point, I believed that whatever other California Indian cultures were left from the missions had been swallowed up by the powwow culture brought in from other states. Before Google and Amazon, written research started in the libraries. I sought out more information on my people, the Kumeyaay. As a byproduct, I came across histories and accounts regarding other California Indians. It was apparent to me that history had been whitewashed and sanitized for the most part. Some of the accounts and opinions regarding California Indians were so racist and dehumanizing they approached the absurd. Yet these were the scholarly sources of the day. During one of these searches, I stumbled upon a copy of The Way We Lived in a Public Library. It was a discordant element among the status quo of historical references. Here was a publication that was unafraid to step outside the politically correct narrative and show the California Indian people for all their breadth and diversity as vibrant, intelligent, loving, jocular human beings. I had never read a book on California Indians that gave me such a kaleidoscope of mental images across time or that covered so many California tribes from periods of routine normality to the horrors of genocide. It inspired me to learn more about my own history and culture. Surely we too had corresponding tales of the hunt, creation, survival, and our common humanity. To be continued. Good morning, church. This is a time in our service when we remember ancestors. Um, <clears throat> most of you know that I have been involved with a program in the Presbytery called Commissioned Lay Elders. Um, it's a program to prepare worship leaders uh, for a broader representation in the, um, in the life of a church. And so I've gladly taken that on. Um, but as a result of that, I've been thinking a lot about my own faith journey. And you've heard me talk about my grandmother before. So I just want to say um, again this morning that my grandmother, um, Candace Dennis, um, her maiden name, Thomas, Candace Irene Thomas, was rooted in prayer. Um, she prayed almost unceasingly. It made me think about um, some of those uh, folks that you see with prayer beads who are constantly rubbing the prayer beads. Well, she didn't have prayer beads, but she had a constant prayer in her heart and in her being. And, and as I think more about my faith journey, I think about her as she um, exemplified a life of prayer no matter what she was doing. So this morning, I remember my grandmother, Candace Irene Thomas Dennis, um, as my an ancestor. And now with this libation, let's share a moment of silence to honor and remember those ancestors who have paved the way for us.
If you'd like to call out their names, please do so. God, source of all hope and love, hear our prayers and gratitude for our ancestors, the living and the not yet born. We ask forgiveness for the things we have done that hurt or disappointed our ancestors. We ask for grace to do things that honor them. In your many names, amen. And Ashe. I am one with the creation, I am one with the heart of God, I am one with the soul of the Spirit, I am one with God, I am one with the heart of creation, I am one with the heart of soul of the spirit i am one with god i am one with the heart of creation i am one with the heart of love i am one with the soul of the spirit i am one with god Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join in the call to worship. God's love for us is great. God is like a loving parent who watches over us. God's mercy for us is great. God reaches out to us in healing, patience, and peace. Praise be to God who has called us here. Praise be to God whose love and mercy is given to us. Amen. Oh, that's 
pray together. Lord, we have, we have come this day seeking, seeking your presence and healing love. Be with us as we hear the words of hope and compassion. Give us courage to learn and grow that we might serve you faithfully all of our days. Amen. And we're going to get our peace candle lit first off. Peace candle is shining brightly. Uh, we can say this prayer together. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be known as the children of God. And as Jesus said, but I say to you that here love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. And to those who strike you on the cheek, offer the other one also. And from those who take your cloak, do not withhold your coat as well. As you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. And let us hear our beautiful, beautiful singing voice. peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us all offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Into thy hands I commit my spirit, thy will is my will. Heal me at death, so that I may glorify God. O oh, heal that which he to be revealed, heal that which needs to be so that I may glorify God. This is our opportunity to offer prayers for joy and concerns, and we'll listen first for our folks on Zoom. We have uh, four people on Zoom today. Um, Bob Hastings, um, Chuck Dibdell, Tom Cundiff, and someone by telephone as well. If any of you who have any prayers, please unmute yourself and I'll relay it to the people here. Not hearing any today? Thanks. Um, I'm not at home, but <laughs> I would like to request prayer for the families and those affected by the deaths of over 500 people at the Hodge this past week. Um, may they rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Is there anyone who had help? Jamie? You had your hand up? Yeah. I have a good friend, Cindy, who is really struggling with cancer. 
I talked to her this week, and I'm just afraid for her. Lord, in your mercy. Fine, are you? Good morning, everyone. I'd like to pray for the Bradshaw family as Floyd just lost his wife, and we had her funeral yesterday, so keep them in prayer. God bless you all, and thank you very much. Lord, in your mercy. Anybody else here? Oh, Bill. Yeah, I have a, a joy. My birthday's coming up, and if you'd like to, if you'd like to help celebrate my birthday, we're going to have cake and ice cream after the service. Now, a concern of mine is that um, here recently I had a CT scan, mm. and what they've determined is my cancer has grown. And as a matter of fact, it's grown adjacent to my kidney. Oh. And it's, the cancer tumor is as large as my kidney. So as a result of it, chemotherapy is not working for me anymore. And I will be going into um, radiation therapy or planning on Tuesday to see what the next steps are. And I think it's going to be radiation. And that's going to help kill the cancer cells, but not necessarily do away with all of them. Mm. So. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Uh, continue prayers for Julie. Um, she's, since her mother's service, she had a, got, got an infection uh, with her peridium infusion and she's on antibiotics she's in good spirits but she's also um, struggling with it all because it's just cumbersome because um, now she has to do um, dialysis in the middle of the day besides all night long mm -hmm. so uh, prayers for Julie and then also prayers for um, social Barbara's name is down today um, I'll have a list so that you can sign up to uh, do coffee hour. I say coffee hour. It's not a whole hour. It's much shorter than that. <laughs> but we always call it coffee hour. So anyway, um, I'll have this on the board. I'll take it down and finish it. It's not complete, but at least it has lines on it for you to sign up. Okay. Lord, in your mercy and... And in our joys and celebrations. Yes, Donald, I think. Anybody else out here? Or I can use that. No. All right, so um, two concerns I do have. Um, I'm in the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir. Um, we've, a couple weeks, lost a member who had a stroke and has passed away. And his service will be uh, July 6th, and so we'll be we'll be memorializing him. And also, I want you to pray for a friend of mine. Um, he is going through a really rough time, and he's been set up by people in positions of law enforcement, I believe. And he has a trial, and he goes to court uh, tomorrow. And I just pray that it will be a lesser charge. Because I don't want him to lose his job. I don't want him to have to go through that, especially if it's something that really wasn't his fault. I mean, he definitely got caught in the crossfires, but um, just pray that um, that uh, there'll be a lesser charge. And his name was Chris. Chris? Okay. Lord, in your mercy. Are there any others? Let us pray. Creator God, we give you thanks for the wonder of this world, for the joys that we see in it, for the wonderful colors and odors and aromas. Help us to appreciate more fully the world that we have received from your hand. Help us to be faithful stewards of all the gifts that we have received. 
We also know that the world can be a hard place sometimes. We pray for all those who are suffering from uh, the heat, especially those who died in Mecca. Continue to lead us and keep us faithful to you, even in times of trouble and, under, and misunderstanding. We also pray that we can offer other, each other up in, in our needs, in our wants. Help us to be with those who are mourning, that they may be comforted. We pray for healing in those who are ill and for those who are coming to surgery. Watch over all those who feel lost and unsure that they may be guided by your spirit. Help us to lift up all these people in our prayers, especially those we hold in the quiet of our hearts as we pray together in silence. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have called us into community. Help us to be a healing community, a community, a place where we hold one another up in love and in grace. Continue to bind us together in that love, knowing that as we follow Christ, we follow, we follow you in, in the grace that you have given us. And bind us together in prayer, especially that prayer we have been taught. O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, Focus your light within us, make it useful. Create your reign of unity now. Your one desire then acts with ours, as in all light, so in all forms. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Do not let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. From you is born all ruling will, the power and the life to do, the song that beautifies all, from age to age it renews. Truly, power to these statements, may they be the ground from which all my actions grow. Amen. see skies of blue and clouds of white the bright blessed day the dark sacred night and I think to myself what a wonderful world the colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people going by i see friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying i love you i hear babies cry 
grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Shabba da booba zibi wa, oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Armstrong has entered the building. Thank you, that was very beautiful. <laughs> Scripture reading this morning is 2 Corinthians 6, verses 1 through th 13. This is from the NRSV. As we work together with him, we entreat you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, in great endurance, afflictions, hardship, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, impurity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right, for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and look, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, for only in yours. In return, I speak as children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All creation is a word of God. All creation speaks volumes. Good morning, church. It is really an honor to be here again. I, I was thinking to myself as I drove in, a year ago I preached here and I had just undergone my knee replacement surgery about four weeks before that. And I remember it was a challenging walk from, from the car into here. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm so grateful that it didn't feel that way today. Uh, Amen. God is good, right? Um, it's wonderful to be here. Would you pray with me? Dear God, we just ask uh, for your blessing upon this morning. Uh, we ask uh, that you'll just be with us in all of our concerns and, and worries and fears and frustrations and suffering, God. And uh, we also ask for hope and compassion uh, that we may move forward this day uh, in a beautiful way, having experienced your spirit, and may the words that I say be pleasing unto you. Amen. In our scripture, which was so beautifully read this morning, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Corinthians, who he believed were focused more on the outward appearances of success and praise 
rather than the inward work of following the Spirit. They were also listening to other leaders, some of his rivals at that time. Now, Paul focused his ministry on reconciliation and healing through self-sacrifice for and to others in need, instead of looking to the worldly pursuits of the day. And he urged the Corinthians to believe and correct their ways. When we all act like the Corinthians in this passage, I believe that we avoid the inner work of acknowledging what is actually happening within us and within our communities. Paul even uses the scripture from Isaiah 49, 8 to emphasize that now is the time for reconciliation. You see that in the beginning of the passage. What we could also call salvation. Now, I don't know about you, but I often find myself thinking and acting a lot like the Corinthians. My focus is often on the things of this world. I don't always listen to the people that perhaps I should. I get jealous when people intentionally praise someone else instead of me. But mostly I tend to avoid the hard conversations. Not so much with others, but more so with myself. But I'll get to that. There was a lot of suffering endured by Paul and his disciples. He writes, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. The Corinthians may have thought they had joy, in this moment. But when we avoid our true selves, it is only a false joy. Sometimes it is actually in allowing ourselves to face and go through the hard thing that we are able to get through the hard thing. In December, I started serving as a chaplain at John Muir Health Hospital, a trauma center in Walnut Creek. It was there that I learned how to listen. I saw and experienced what it is to go through and witness a devastating event. Many of you here know this better than I do. Of this I am nearly certain. And I heard many of your concerns as we shared this morning. But for me it was at the hospital that I came to understand the gospel on a deeper level. Trigger warning here, for me, seeing two parents who lost their child was the hardest moment. It ripped me open in a way I had never felt before. All of a sudden, the headlines that we see every day in the news became real, right in front of me. And I recognized just how much pain is being carried by people every day all around us. I believe that I saw the depth of human despair that day. But it was in that witnessing that I was able to appreciate the wonders that we have access to every day as we walk on this earth. God is always available to us. And as I said, sometimes I do avoid facing the hard realities within myself, whether it be an inauthenticity I'm carrying, a fear, a worry, a doubt, but it is the gospel that reminds me that I can operate at a higher frequency. Many of us want to avoid or run away from the pain of going through something difficult or really looking at ourselves and listening to our feelings and emotions and then investigating why they are there. Consciously or unconsciously, we tell ourselves that we can just detour and go straight to happiness and joy. But as it was for the Corinthians, that is a false hope. What if the opposite is true? 
What if it is actually in going through the immense pain that we are able to recognize and appreciate what it is to be truly restored? In going through or witnessing something impossibly hard, we come to realize that it is only in walking through that valley that we are able to know and appreciate how good the sunshine feels. We cannot have one without the other. It can feel like a storm, like the winds are all around you and you're going to drown. Anyone who has suffered a tremendous grief, trauma, failure, or public humiliation knows this pain and this fear. When we are in the midst of facing the aspects of ourselves that we do not like or we are afraid of, we are going to go through a torment, perhaps by the loss of a family member or trusted friend. We can feel as though we are buried alive in pain and grief. The very idea of going through it brings a kind of visceral fear. Because frankly, what if we go into the tunnel and it just collapses? The Buddhist nun and writer Pema Chodron talks about the path to healing being found by going into the pit with those who are suffering, rather than desperately fighting our way out of it. Going towards it. She says, that being on the mountaintop sometimes without also knowing what it is to be in the crater usually means that we have perhaps left some others behind. Worldly pursuits. Pema also talks about the enacting the daily practice of Tonglen, where she literally breathes in the suffering of others and then breathes out peace and ease for them. If we look even further into this interfaith teaching, we find that the first noble truth of Buddhism, Buddhism is that life involves suffering. And it is through that suffering that we are able to gain insight and ultimately liberation or salvation. But I'll say this, we must also know our capacity because it cannot always just be suffering. The theologian Guy Nace writes, it is important that living with confidence in the midst of suffering is not the same thing as passively accepting suffering and waiting for one's pie in the sky when I die. I am not saying that we shouldn't draw powerful boundaries and remove ourselves from abuse or other traumatic situations, needless suffering like our opening hymn mentioned. I am not saving, saying that we should resort to nihilism given we know suffering is all around us. Womanist the theologians offer a deep criticality of suffering for suffering's sake, a theology used and still used to keep evil systems in place for the benefit of, few, of a few, many of who look like me, at the expense and erasure of the many. I am not romanticizing or lifting up a passive acceptance of suffering, no. That would be dangerous and not the point. I am saying that it is in getting to know suffering we can develop compassion and seek out real healing for ourselves and for others. Pema Chodron also says that a world without compassion is a scary world indeed. I'm also going to say that we need to maintain a level of self-care in order to stay in the ministry of alleviating our own suffering and the suffering of others. And I quickly learned that by some of the more experienced chaplains at John Muir Health. Taking time to sit outside in the gardens became a daily practice for me, one that I cherished and came to rely on for my own well-being and for the very ability to be with and care for others. Part of self-care is being as compassionate to ourselves as we are to others. I remember there was a specific chaplain who was shadowing me one day just to see how I was doing. Uh, she was very experienced. And she said, so when do you rest? because I was going from room to room to room. And I said, well, I, when I chart, you know, in the computer system, and she said, is that enough? 
And then she said, no, I, I go out to the creek sometimes for an hour at a time. And that was a, it, it was a revelation to me. And it made me look at how I care for myself. And I wanted to offer that to you today. Like my mom would care for herself in an orphanage in London when she was a child and sit alone and pray that her parents would return each evening. We must make practices to care for ourselves. Jesus did this. We find examples of him through the scriptures going off on a daily basis and praying by himself. He cared for himself that he could care for others. Chaplains, firefighters, nurses, pastors, teachers, anyone who cares for someone else all need to love themselves in order to truly love and be a blessing to others. The scripture this morning was from the lectionary, and is, so is this also, this one here, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. In it we read, That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wave and wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Let us willingly enter and experience the pit for others, for ourselves. Let us also care for ourselves in this process, though, being mindful that we must rest and at times lean on others through the journey. Jesus cared for himself in this passage by sleeping in the boat that day. Sometimes you need others to steer and sail for a while. They gave him space so that he could rise and face the winds and the storm and the pit head on and calm the seas, bringing peace, reconciliation. We also know that he went through the ultimate trial, which then brought forth the most glorious joy we can imagine. Perhaps that is the hidden secret of the gospel. By going through the valley, we open ourselves to be carried in God's everlasting arms, whether by through the grace of others, our own self-compassion, or something much more mysterious, genuine, yet regarded as imposters, known, yet regarded as unknown, Dying, and yet we live on. Beaten, and yet not killed. Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet making many rich. Having nothing, and yet possessing everything. So friends, let us go to the other side of the lake. The other side of what the world teaches us. The other side of what the Corinthians were chasing. And as we go, May we encounter the truth of the gospel in a way that we may have shrouded from ourselves or others before. Let us reconcile with ourselves and with our neighbors. And when we are resourced and ready through care for ourselves, knowingly walk into the hard thing rather than away from it. Whether that be with our family, our friends, within our neighborhood, 
for Palestine, or any of those who are suffering right now. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the time for reconciliation. The tunnel may just hold. The sun is shining. The day before us is glorious. So are we, and so is God. Amen. You have heard the word. We now have an opportunity to respond with our gifts. During the offertory or closing hymn, you are invited to bring your gifts to the offering plate here in front or to the one in the back of the chapel. You may also wish to give online via Zelle or by mail. Instructions for both opportunities are noted in the announcements and he blasts. May our gifts be from the heart and blessed by divine love.
Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Creator Christ and Holy Lord, how can we remember all your creation in this offering? You have given us time and the seasons. You have given us families and friends. You have given us our family of the church. You give us the new life and growth of springtime with the reminder of new life in Christ. Creator God, accept our gifts and our lives that the world and all people may praise your name. Accept our offering of love. Amen. Amen. Send us Send forth, us forth oh God, God, with, with every, every breath of thanksgiving, every thought wrapped in compassion, every word filled with kindness, and every deed a channel of love. Through your grace, 
may, may our, our lives, lives become, become a, prayer. a prayer. So now may we go out knowing that God is with us, God is good, and may us care for ourselves so that we may care for our others in this world where there is suffering. We say these things in your name. Amen. Amen. And the words of whoever said the statement, which we all know is not Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake. <laughs>